Hello and welcome to the Everything is Black and White podcast slash Chronicle Live. Andrew Muscovy outside of St James's Park and of course the big news this week to do with the ground is the potential expansion of the East Stand there over my shoulder. Now I've just caught up with uh, the gentleman who owns St James's Terrace which is the building right behind me and which of course the future of that will come into discussion when it comes to any expansion of the East Stand as will the future of Lisa's Terrace. Now St James's Terrace is a Grade 2 listed building, which isn't quite as important as the Grade 1 listed Leeser's Terrace, but it's still pretty significant. There'll be a lot of hoops, a lot of red tape to jump through if indeed Newcastle United uh, look to move uh, either of the terraces. Now, there's been a lot of discussion about could they knock it down and build it brick for brick elsewhere. My personal opinion is that these buildings are part of the city heritage uh, part of the city's history and heritage and they need to be protected i know that won't please every newcastle united fan but that is my opinion as much as newcastle United is important to the city so are these buildings that uh, really tell the footprint of our city and and region now the east stand it's not going to be easy to expand at all Uh, rumored uh, an extra 10,000 seats is what they're looking at they've been speaking to architects and and looking at just how feasible it is to expand it we know that demand is through the roof and 10,000 seats won't be enough to uh, satisfy that demand because everybody wants a ticket Premier League football Champions League football the cup runs this is Newcastle United of today successful and popular and people are absolutely loving it and you know those seats whenever they come those extra seats whenever they come will be snapped up instantly of course Newcastle United have bought the land uh, by Strawberry Corner Story Place which gives them in time you would think a possibility to expand the Gallagher but as with the East Stand it'll be expensive it'll be time consuming and you're gonna have to have lots of conversations about how it's done um, want to watch on there you would think for now that'll be where the fan zone will go which will bring in that extra revenue on a match day which will be brilliant as well but yes out here at St James's Park, let me know in the comments about the potential expansion of the East Stand. Are you for it? I suspect a lot of you will disagree with my opinion on Lisa's Terrace and uh, St James's Terrace, but that's, that, that's football. Let me know what your thoughts on it. And also look out for the interview with the gentleman who does indeed own St James's Terrace behind me. And head over to chroniclelive.co.uk to see the interview in full uh, that he spoke to Kieran Kelly about the future of this building and the potential expansion of St James's Park. My name's uh, Cash Mumtaz and um, I'm here to uh, discuss the uh, possibilities of uh, this new uh, possible extension on the East End. Well, first and foremost, I'm a Newcastle fan. So I think when you look at uh, the stadium, the East End, it's now over 50 years old. It's really showing its age. And um, I think a lot of people don't realise that, you know, we are you know, one of the biggest clubs in the country in terms of fan base. Um, with so many thousands of people you know, waiting to get on the season ticket list. Um, I think it'd just be great news um, for the city in general uh, and the club as well. I mean, if we were to get um, an extension or a new uh, East Stand being built, I think it would have just like a, a trickle-down effect on the rest of the economy. Um, you know, a lot, lot more people coming into the city, you know, it would help our sort of uh, local economy, our hospitality sector and, you know, bring our club on par with, uh, you know, the rest of the leading teams in the country? Um, there's, I think they're, they're starting a feasibility study, so I think let's wait and see what comes out of that feasibility study. Um, I think there's lots of options um, at play here. I mean, the road behind you, um, you know, it's not a heavily sort of uh, used road. Um, at the far end it's a no entry anyway so i think there's lots of there is scope there's definitely scope here um and i think let's just wait to see what the feasibility comes back with um potentially there may you know we may need to do something with this building because this building as you see it's the closest to the east stand so um from my point of view you know i would love to see you know our stadium being brought on par um, I'd love to see you know more people come in the city with now this talk of a new fan zone being built on the former strawberry site so I think this is all positive news for the city and I think you know all of this um, would uh, you know would just transform um, not only give uh, the fans what they need but I think it'll just have a, a catalytic effect on the rest of the city in terms of the economy uh, 
Well, you know, this is, we are in a conservation area, um, and uh, these Grade 2 listed buildings, you're right, you know, they are part of our heritage. Um, grade 2 listed, um, I think, you know, it, it, the, the most important building in terms of historical significance is the one behind you, Lise's Terrace, that's Grade 1 listed. Grade 2, you know, we have to, uh, as developers, you know, we have to really try and preserve as many of the original features as possible uh, to make sure that, you know, we retain, uh, you know, all the history. Um, when I first bought the buildings, you know, there were a lot of uh, interesting features which we've retained, ornate fireplaces, ceiling roses, you know, things like that. So I think no one wants to see, you know, these buildings in, in sort of, uh, you know, being demolished. But at the same time, it really is a balancing act. You know, we have to look at the needs of the city, the needs of the club, and what it means to the local economy versus, you know, trying to preserve as much as we can uh, in terms of our heritage. I think the only way we can do this is working in partnership uh, and I think you know myself and other developers um, you know I've already had conversations with some other some of the other owners as well and you know everyone's feeling very positive about this I think they can see that the new owners have got great ambition for the club great ambition for our city you know and all of the sort of um, you know the potential plans that, that are being talked about you know it's all positive news so I don't think anyone will object to you know more inward investment coming in no one's going to object to having a state to the art stadium and really sort of you know lifting the profile of our city and the club so um, the way I see this being done is you know working you know in partnership uh, working in consultation with all our stakeholders you know being being at the council you know English Heritage the club you know and other sort of developers and owners as well